Hey Millennials and Gen Z's, have you ever been wondering why it seems like your wallet is on a diet but everybody else around you is feasting? Or does it seem like the boomers are out there in the buffet line but you're getting stuck with the bill? Let's shed some light on what's going on with the economy and why younger folks can't seem to financially get ahead. Here's some of the reasons why millennials and Gen Z's are stressed out financially. 86% of millennials and Gen Z's have lower purchasing power than baby boomers did. Not only has the cost of living increased, but things like housing and education and just food itself has gone up considerably. And almost 73% of millennials and Gen Z's are living paycheck to paycheck. So let's find out why it's occurring, how we can put a stop to it. So there's something called the home to income ratio. Basically, it's a scale that tells you how affordability with regard to housing is going. And a higher ratio means that there's less affordability. A good guideline is anywhere from three to five on the home to income ratio. So let's look at this year's current pricing home to income ratios. The median home price in the United States right now is about $416,000 with the average annual income of $63,000. If you look at that as a ratio, it's 6.55 on the home to income ratio. Back in 1988, when boomers were buying homes, the median home price was $110,000 and their income was around $27,000 giving you a 4.05 home to income ratio. Just with that variable, you can see that gap. It was a lot cheaper to buy the homes and income to the home ratio was a lot more affordable. Now you're looking at million dollar homes in most places and the income hasn't gone up considerably. The average tuition for a four year college is somewhere around $44,000 to $67,000. That's a big ouch. And just the student loan debt in the United States, it's almost $2 trillion effing dollars. The average loan amount that most students have at the end of a four-year degree is around $29,000. That already sets you back quite a lot. But guess what? Because of the new era of what's going on in terms of online education and your ability to go ahead and take on jobs and entrepreneurship gigs online, it's really diminishing that traditional educational model and for good reason as well. So here are some tips that you can utilize right now. Number one, you can start, I know it's early, but you can start to invest in your retirement with a individualized retirement program, like an IRA or Roth IRA. You can start consistently saving money. No matter what your income bracket, you can cut out your costs and start to build that nest egg earlier. And according to the Wall Street Journal, if you start to switch jobs, at least in the same arena, you can continuously get higher paying jobs. Now. Whether that's true or not, you know, I come from a parent that worked 34 years as a maid and did amazingly well because she continued to invest her money the right way. This all goes down to understanding yourself and what type of financial challenges you have. Start to take account for all your spending and all your savings and definitely start to keep a budget no matter if you live alone or if you're just a roommate start to really look at how much money is coming in and how much money is leaving your bank account on a daily and monthly level also look at limiting the amount of student loan you take out and consider alternate ways you maybe want to work full time while you get education, or maybe you wanna take a semester off and build up your reserves. The key factor is if you've got a huge loan and you're just starting out your life, it kinda of holds you back. The other thing, and I'm gonna get some hate for this, is to actually reconsider getting a college degree if you can't afford it. Now, before you do that, there are ways to you know, save money. You can go to school online nowadays, or you don't have to go to the top university and put yourself in huge debt. Look at alternatives. Is there a school that's just as good that saves you money? 
Do you have to move out of state? Can you go to a college locally and live at home still? There are a lot of variables that you can do to not only cut down the student loan, but reconsider the education thing completely. So, you know, what do you think? Let me know. Is college still something that is needed nowadays? I'll let you decide and you can write down in the comments down below. If you didn't go to a college or if you do have student loans, I'd like to know about it. Get yourself into becoming a regular investor. Save your money and then start to invest in things that you really understand, whether it's fashion or technology or cars. Look at the companies that you're using as far as being a consumer and start to open yourself up in buying shares. That's called stocks. Continue to educate yourself about becoming a active investor in your future. Also, consider boosting your income by taking on second jobs or side jobs or using some of your hobbies to get you more income. Or even job switching that I told you about earlier where you're consistently every year trying to apply for a higher position as you gain experience. Although it may not make you the most consistent in one job place, it does show that people can get more and more money. But all the money that you make doesn't really count unless you also control your spending. So if you like more financial advice like this that is real, simple, easy to apply, go ahead and like, share, and comment down below.